By the 1950s, the people in the small town of Bean Blossom, Indiana, had grown their passion for live country music into the renowned Brown County Jamboree. But after a little more than a decade, the venue needed a new owner to reinvigorate its shows and grow its legacy. Fortunately, the father of bluegrass himself, Bill Monroe, had fallen in love with the Jamboree after he performed there in the early 1950s. He began playing there regularly and soon had taken over management of the venue. Even though Bill Monroe was born and raised in Kentucky, his Hoosier roots ran deep. In 1929, at the age of 18, Bill moved to Indiana with his brothers Charlie and Birch. Bill joined Charlie working at the Sinclair Oil Refinery in Whiting, unloading oil barrels from freight trains, cleaning empty containers, and doing general janitorial work. Like other Southerners that came north looking for work during the Depression, Bill Monroe and his brothers brought their cultural and musical traditions with them. As they had back in Kentucky, they began playing at local gatherings, like the square dances held in an old storefront in nearby Hammond, Indiana. Along with their friend Larry Moore, the boys formed a group known as the Monroe Brothers, a country music string band featuring Bill on the mandolin. Shortly after, the Monroe Brothers were discovered by a country music program director who hired them as a square dance team, and the boys set off, performing at a traveling variety show sponsored by the radio station. Soon, the Monroe Brothers could be heard on radio stations across northern Indiana, even performing their own 15-minute serial program on a Gary station. This drew the attention of the Grand Palace Theater in Chicago, which booked the Monroe Brothers to perform. Their next big break, however, took them even further away from the Hoosier State. During the time Bill was away from Indiana, his career skyrocketed. By 1936, RCA Victor signed the Monroe Brothers and released their single, What Would You Give in Exchange for Your Soul? Two years later, the Monroe Brothers disbanded, but Bill quickly formed other groups, including an early version of the soon-to-be legendary Bluegrass Boys. In 1939, Bill successfully auditioned for the iconic Grand Ole Opry, the venue that would help make him a star. To accompany his unique mandolin melodies and high tenor voice, Bill Monroe added Earl Scruggs on the banjo and Lester Flatt on guitar in 1945. With this classic lineup, the Bluegrass Boys were born. Over the next two years, the band recorded several successful songs for Columbia Records, including Blue Moon of Kentucky, which became a hit again in 1954 when a young, unknown singer called Elvis Presley covered the song for the B-side of his very first single. Flatt and Scruggs left the band in the late 1940s, but Bill Monroe's success continued. The New York Times referred to him as the universally recognized father of bluegrass and reported that he helped lay the foundation of country music. By the time Monroe returned to the Hoosier State in the early 1950s, the Brown County Jamboree had become hugely popular. Bill Monroe began playing at the popular Brown County Jamboree by 1951. Likely it was that same year that Bill decided to purchase the Jamboree grounds from local owners May and Francis Rund. When Monroe took over operations, he kept the regular Sunday Jamboree show that had been running May through November for over a decade but he needed a new angle to maintain its popularity. As rock and roll took over the airwaves in the first half of the 1950s, less people came to Bean Blossom seeking country music. However, with the revival of the folk movement in the late 1950s and early 60s, Bill Monroe and his unique style of bluegrass attracted national attention once more. This reinvigorated interest in Bean Blossom as well, and the time felt right for Monroe's next move a large annual bluegrass festival. On June 24th and 25th, 1967, Bill Monroe hosted the first festival, which he called the Big Bluegrass Celebration. The next year, the festival had to be extended to three days to accommodate the large crowd of 10,000 music lovers. In 1969, the event was billed as Bill Monroe's Bluegrass Festival, and the grounds were now referred to as the Brown County Jamboree Park.
By the 1970s, the festival had evolved into an international event, with musicians and attendees coming to Bean Blossom from across the world, even as far away as New Zealand and Japan. Bill Monroe remained active in festival activities until his death in 1996, but his legacy continues at Bean Blossom today. Just last year, the park, now known as Bill Monroe's Memorial Park and Campground, held its 50th annual Bill Monroe Memorial Bean Blossom Bluegrass Festival. Here, visitors are seen pausing in front of a new state historical marker and remembering the handful of Bean Blossom residents who started it all with one lone microphone and an amplifier in the parking lot of an old filling station and a deep love for country music.